in this page, a series webinars will happen within this week, different time, different dates, different time slot. If you uh, want to browse what exactly pro program, you can click this program and to get a little bit of better overview. And then if you're interested in certain webinars, you can click register. And then follow the register and you, uh, you need to input your name and also your email address. Afterwards, you will get an email from us and then follow the information in the email. You could participate webinars you choose. And of course, besides our website and also webinars, we also provide different social medias. So follow Fontys ICT, uh, Compass, Eindhoven. You could choose different social medias, for example, Instagram and YouTube, Facebook and LinkedIn. Those are the links. Those information will share with you guys, or you can also find from the website. So that's all. That will be the first part. In case you have questions, please write down questions in the chat. And now I would like to move to the second part. And OK, let me first share my screen for the video. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can see the screen, yeah. Lily, yeah. but it's quite small. Can you make it somewhat bigger? Um, it's a little bit bigger now. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger now, but I think you can make it full screen. It's already, in my view, already full screen. Maybe because of uh, the recording from last year. Let me run it and then can you see it? Yeah, it's not getting bigger. OK, I propose maybe we just getting start. Yeah, just start, uh, Lily. Uh, let's give it a try. OK, OK, good evening, everyone. Welcome to join this webinar tonight. So this webinar is for ICT and media design. And tonight we have two uh, hosts. Uh, my name is Lily and also I have another host, Carla Young. Before we get you started, we would like to introduce ourselves firstly. And I would like to go first. So my name is Lee. Lee. So very simple and easy to remember. Currently, I'm a senior lecturer and also the coordinator for the ICT and media design. Uh, shortly about my background. So about 10 years ago, I come to the Netherlands. The reason I always got a question, why I got question from others ask why you came to the Netherlands. Actually, first I got a scholarship from NAFIC. And then afterwards, I studied at TU Delft, also TU Eindhoven. And in TU Eindhoven, I got my professional doctorate in engineering degree. Afterwards, I work at different companies. Before I joined Fontys four years ago, I work at Arsenal. And we have another guest, Carl Young. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Carl Young. Nice to meet you. We are very pleased that you joined us tonight for this webinar for ICT Media Design. Uh, currently, I'm a second year student in Fontys with ICT and Media Design. I'm 20 years old and I'm from Bulgaria. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the uh, specialization, the program, and we will be telling you all about it just in a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay. okay, so this webinar is in total about one hour. The content will be organized in this way. First, Carl Young will tell his story as a student journey, and afterwards, I will tell the highlights about ICT and media design. 
for example, how to look like the structure of the four year bachelor program and also how we teach students, how we training students and also give you guys some uh, good examples. You can have a vivid view and it's also important uh, before you start program to understand after four years study what kind of job perspective you can expect in the end. Yeah, last but not least, Q&A sessions. It's about 50 minutes. If you guys have any questions, please do ask. OK, first part I would like to give to the color young. Could you take over for this part? Yes. Yeah. Also, just something else. I see that some students are also joining after that. Could you admit them? Whenever yeah, they yeah. Yeah. yeah, I will take care. No problem. OK. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yep. OK, I'll just start. Also, just something quick. Whenever you guys have some questions, you can if you want unmute yourself and raise a hand or you can just uh, type in the chat so that we can answer later throughout. But other than that, in the end, we will have a Q&A session, so there will be no question missed. OK, so let's start. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about my, my journey. So uh, a little bit, uh, I think a year and a half ago when I was in your place, uh, I was just starting my bachelor degree and I already had some programming background. So I already knew what I wanted to do, but I just didn't want it to be exactly again programming because I had this idea that I wanted to study something else so that I can broaden my horizons. And in the end, I can uh, have programming skills, but I can have also something else in as my knowledge. That is why first I chose uh, the ICT and business uh, program in Fontis, and I actually applied for that one uh, because, as I said, I wanted to broaden my horizons. I still wanted to keep my programming skills and knowledge. I wanted to develop them and build upon them. That is why I wanted to be in the ICT field, but as I said, I wanted to do something else. And when you start at Fontis, I think you probably already know, but we'll look into that also in uh, some a couple of minutes. Uh, basically, when you start, you have uh, five different programs which you can pick from. And in the beginning, you will study all five of them. They are software engineering, business, media design, infrastructure engineering, and technology. Uh, we'll learn a, a little bit more about them later. Uh, but when we were learning all of them, uh, I didn't really know what is media design because I saw it for the first time and yeah, I just I was sure that I wanted to do business or maybe software engineering as a backup plan if I didn't like business and I was going to continue with programming. But then I was like, OK, maybe media design sounds uh, interesting because I was not very intrigued by the business. I was thinking differently when I saw media design and I also consider myself as a creative person. So this was very important for me uh, because media design, of course, it's uh, the most creative of the uh, the programs from about from all of them. And I was like, OK, when I pick that, I can still uh, develop my uh, technical skills like my programming, analytical and other things. That's why I show this picture, because this was a very inspirational one for me that the brain has actually two hemispheres like technically and yeah, basically the left part is for the more the analytical and the strategic mathematics thinking and the right one is more creativity. You are free spirit, passionate about things. And I was like, OK, why don't I uh, maybe develop both of them? Because I didn't want to choose. I wanted to be a creative person, but I wanted to have my technical skills also on point. And that was one of the reasons that I was intrigued by media design. And the other thing was this diagram, because I remember on the second week when we had lectures in uh, like all, in all of the five streams for the media design in the presentation, our teacher back then showed us this diagram and I was very in, not impressed, but this was like a turning point for me because he was explaining to us, OK, uh, for media design, there is something called user experience, which by the way, we will get into in five minutes. Uh, so this user experience is part of That field, the user experience field, and basically it is uh, a combination between business, technology and design. And in technology comes also programming, 
and in business comes the things that I wanted to do, and in design comes creativity. And that is why when I saw this diagram, I was like, oh my God, like if I choose this specialization, this program, I still need a design. I can maybe do, like not maybe, I will do all three of these things that I really wanted to do. I can keep my programming skills on point. I can learn some things about business and I also can explore my creativity. And I was like, I don't have to think anymore about it. This is it. Like, that's the thing. I just wanted to pick that. And eventually I picked it. That's why right now I'm second year student in media design. But let's talk a little bit more about what is actually is ICT in media design. So uh, ICT media design is a very broad field. As you mentioned already, it is the most creative of them all for sure. But that doesn't mean that this field is more like, of course, it's more artsy, it's more design related, uh, but it's not necessary that you have to be artists or painters or something like that. It's very encouraged, like it will be a plus for sure. But still, you are in the ICT sphere, which means that you're in the digital world. Uh, and yeah, in the end, you will be graduating as an ICT professional, but you will have uh, creativity skills, creative skills developed. So I think that's very important. And let's talk a little bit more about the mindset of media design and why, in my opinion, it is, I would say, maybe the best of all of them, because let's compare it to maybe just uh, programming. Uh, let's say you have, because in programming, you know, you can program websites, you can program mobile applications or different software products or even hardware products or embedded systems program. But let's say that you are studying programming and basically you have a task, you have uh, like a specific problem that you have to solve and you dive in directly into the solution. You just want to code it. You just want to be done with that website. But here in media design, we take things a little bit slow. We take one step back. And we actually first focus on the problem. And this is the most crucial thing about media design. First, we focus on a specific problem, whether that problem is for a certain set of people, whether it's a problem in society in general, for example, what is happening right now the, in the world. And we focus, we want to research a lot. We want to find a specific problem that we want to solve. And when we have that problem, that something that is relevant that we want to provide a solution for, then we generate a lot of ideas and that comes uh, in the second process. We brainstorm, we come up with many, many, many ideas. They can be crazy, you don't have to think about it. You can say, okay, we're going to build a rocket to the moon or whatever. Uh, and after that, we uh, validate those ideas and we filter them out. And in the end, we would have a concept, which means that there is something, okay, maybe that is possible to be built. Like, is it a website, an application, or something that solves the problem? And everything comes in different steps. So in the end, when also we have another step prototype, which is uh, we develop just a prototype of the product. If it's a website, we build something that uh, like looks like a website, but it's actually not a functioning website. And we use it to test it with different users. And in the end, when we uh, finally have our product, we actually have our solution. And when you go back, you would see that we have went through all of these different steps, which means that our solution is proven by the problem. So like this is the advantage of media design that you're focusing on a specific problem. And you're also uh, generating uh, different ideas through different phases, such as inspiration, ideation. And here I have some uh, graphics like the brainstorming. Also, here is the prototyping part, the second image. And for the third one, you basically have a final product. And that's really, really a big thing for media design because you have all of these steps and everything is validated through all of the steps. And so in the end, you have the perfect product. Uh, a little bit about the structure of ICT in media design. Right now, I'm doing the course-based program. And here, basically, we have three subjects which are contained in the media design program. The first one is called user experience. The second one is media production. And the third one is web programming. We will dive into like we will dive in deep into all three of them in a second, but just here as an overview. Uh, user user experience is very important, maybe the most important of them all, because here you focus for the final user. Let's say that you will be building a product if it's a remote uh, device or is it a website or if it's something physical or digital, it doesn't matter. It's still a product, and here you focus on the final user. 
you want to know who you will be using that product so that you can design it exactly for them. But for that a little bit later. Oops, my Siri turned in, turned on. <laughs> uh, yes, and the second one is media production. Here we work with tools such as Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator. We also do a little bit of 3D modeling, which later you can transform into game design if you're interested in game development. Uh, we also have uh, graphic design, uh, storytelling, how to make engaging content, how to create content that is pleasing for people and other interesting things that we will be looking into in a second. And the final thing is web programming, which basically we build websites and other web services by using programming languages and design patterns so that in the end we have a product that is uh, a software product. So let's first uh, talk a little bit about user experience more. So user experience, as I said, maybe is the most crucial of them all because here basically the your focus should be the user, the final user that is going to be using your product that you're des designing. You don't say, OK, I want to build a website for recipes, let's say. You don't just uh, go and OK, I see two websites for recipes. I will just maybe copy them and I will like build my own. But this is not how it's going to work because in the end, the users that are actually visiting those websites would be using uh, your website, which means that you have to talk to them, you have to do your research, you have to get what they want, what they need, what are the pain points, for example. If we focus here, let's say you've seen, for example, uh, that in general they use the green color to something that is good, to something that is su successful, like uh, a task is success successful or the red color if something is not successful. And let's say that here you try to flip those colors around or you pick something else, it wouldn't work because this is something that is proven and that is user experience. The users know that when you see something green that is good or something red that is bad, for example, or something wrong is happening. And in this uh, subject, you see here some buzzwords you will be, as I said, uh, like prototyping. You will be uh, developing different prototypes of the products. You will be uh, researching a lot. You will be speaking to your users. You would make interviews. You would make surveys. You would just basically talk to people so that you get the, as many information, as much information as possible, which you can then use to build your perfect product. Because in the end, what matters is that the user using your product is happy, and you can achieve that by doing your user experience correctly. Uh, the second one is the media production, as we already saw it. Uh, in this one, currently, we started, when we started with uh, media design, we had media production from the beginning. We did some uh, things with uh, photography. We learned basically how the camera works, how you can uh, do some amazing photos. Also, we learned videography, sound quality, and things related to videography and photography in general. Then we dived a little bit deeper into graphic design and colors, typography, how to influence people by colors, what type should you use, and other uh, composition in graphic design and things like that. And right now this year is the most interesting for me because we started actually with 3D modeling. So here you can see one model that actually in the end I'm going to show you. Uh, here, this is a scene from the movie Blade Runner, if you've seen it. Basically, we had an assignment to recreate this scene by using one uh, 3D modeling software. And we have to use a lot of different uh, techniques such as shading, lighting, rendering, which you can see also here in the buzzwords. And this slowly goes into game design, like you can uh, start with 3D modeling, then you can transfer to game design if you're interested in that. Also here you can see some, uh, this is one poster that we, me and my group have done for our project, but I will be talking a little bit later about that. And here also you will be uh, learning the interesting things such as gamification, which means that you uh, apply game elements that are used in games in order to persuade people and to make them motivated, to make them use your application. Also, as I said, storytelling, which is very important. The way you tell your stories, if it's a product, let's say, and you want to present it in front of uh, a big crowd, a big, yeah, a lot of people, 
you use the storytelling technique so that you make your story more engaging, let's say. And the third one is the web programming. Uh, here, as I said, we basically build websites or web applications that are used for, mo uh, for mobile phones and for different devices. Here I have put this GIF. You can see that's called uh, responsive design, which means that you can make websites that can be opened and look amazing on phones, tablets, laptops, PC, TV, whatever. Uh, here we first started uh, uh, with HTML, like how to make the, the design, the structure of the website, uh, HTML and CSS, uh, to, I mean CSS. And also the programming language that we use is JavaScript, but you're not limited to JavaScript. You can use whatever you want. And yeah, for those of you who are not sure what is that, you will, if you, I mean, you will get into that. That's just programming languages with which you can build uh, websites and web applications. Uh, also in this semester, it's really uh, interesting because uh, first I thought actually for the media design that we will be doing only design related stuff. So I mean the user interface of the website and that's it. You won't be uh, interacting with the server, let's say with the database or something in the back end, you will just be doing user interface, but that's totally wrong because in this semester we are also learning back end and databases and actually how to create a website. Uh, that is working from point A to point B. I mean, from the beginning, from scratch. And you don't just do only part of it, the user interface, you do all of it. So there is a lot of programming included here. And this is what I like as well, because I can keep practicing my programming skills from before, but I can build upon my design and creativity with the other two subjects. And the last thing that we have is uh, the projects. Basically, you will be having uh, one or two projects per semester. And in the project, you apply all of those, all of the subjects, media design, uh, sorry, uh, media production, user experience, and web programming. You apply those three subjects into the project. And right now, me and my group, you also work in group projects. You have a team of usually three to five people that you are working with. And right now, me and my team, we have a semester project that we are basically we are doing a web application for mobile phones. That is actually the problem that we wanted to solve is to help students group for projects faster. When you have a project and you have to find teammates, uh, you maybe you know that the struggle that OK, maybe uh, like if you are a new student, you probably don't know who is in your class. Uh, you have to introduce to somebody, but then you don't know if they are actually good. What if uh, they, I don't know, like something happens and you don't uh, group with the right people? And there are a lot of prejudice here. Also uh, speaking about uh, nationality, gender and other things like that. And that is why we wanted to make this application with which you can group with people anonymously. So the concept is that this is our mood board here that we have created. Uh, it will be look, uh, working like Tinder. If you have heard of Tinder, it's basically application for swiping people. And the concept here is the same. You would have your classmates uh, in those cards, as you see in the second image like that, and you can swipe left or right, whether you like them. But the trick is that it's anonymous, so you don't know uh, who is who you just see their skills. You don't know that, for example, this is uh, Petra from my class. You see just a random picture with their skills. And in that way, we avoid the prejudice so that in the end you actually group with people for their skills, not for who they are actually. And this is also our prototype. You can see here uh, that we have applied. Uh, yeah, this is just one of the stages of the design. As I showed you, we are in, currently in the prototyping and the implementation phase, and we are almost, we have, I think, one month left to code the whole application. So yeah, we will be starting with the programming part soon. And as a short conclusion, uh, in media design, we have three subjects, user experience, media production, and web programming. And if you choose it, you would have a lot of fun and also if you are a person who likes to code, there will be coding. If you are a more creative person, there will be a lot of opportunities to uh, build upon your creativity and learn new stuff and also experiment. And you'll be also having some business knowledge, which is part of the user experience because we have also some marketing techniques with which you can apply and also 
business meetings, talking to clients, talking to users, and this is very important. So basically this is the merge that we have in media design. And I think now uh, our other host, Lily, will take over and continue with more academic things. Okay, thank you very much, Carlo Young. I will share my screen. Yep. Can everyone see my screen? Uh, Can you guys see my screen or not yet? I think I'm not seeing it. Okay, let me try again. Yes, now I see the screen, probably other people as well. Yeah, but it's a little bit too big. Switch a little bit, change different view. Can I quickly answer one of the questions I see for the cybersecurity specialization? Is it web programming or user experience? Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically the specializations are happening in semester four and they are not connected to the study, the programs such as ICT software engineering, whether it's uh, uh, media design or something else. When you get to semester four, you can pick uh, whatever you want and it doesn't matter if you have studied before media design or business or something else. And just quickly, another one, is it necessary having programming knowledge before the beginning? I think Lily already answered that question in the chat, but yeah, you don't have to have knowledge and programming skills. You will be learning everything from scratch from the first semester, so you don't have to worry about that. In my case, I was just in a technical school and we I was just studying that and yeah, but you don't have to worry everything you start here from the beginning and you will be learning everything from scratch from ABC. So yeah. Can everyone see my screen now? Uh, yes, I can see the screen. OK. OK, yep. Thanks everyone. Um, yeah, my part. Yeah, second part, I'm going to give you guys uh, shortly uh, introduce about ICT media design, some highlights. I will start with the structure of the four year program. So uh, first year, every academic year, there are two semesters. So semester one, so when the student start, you are not in a hurry. You, you can still spend uh, like 10 weeks or 12 weeks and then there uh, you're learning five profile, the basic, basic level. So for example, the business, infrastructure, technology, and software and media design. And end, uh, not around week 10 till week 12, you can make your choice. So start from week one until week 12, you're learning five profile, basic level. So you can have a little bit of time, think about what suits you best. And then you make a choice. For example, in this case, you choose media design. And then semester two, you go into fully studying media design course. OK, afterwards, how it look like second year, third year, fourth year. For example, our guest, uh, Carl Young, currently he's in the semester three. And afterwards, we'll go to the specialization semester four. And after semester four, we'll be go, go to the semester five, which means internship. So students like apply for a job, they can choose different company to work in. After that, back to Fontys for the semester six. After six, semester six will be semester seven minor. This is also I highlight which means semester four, specialization, semester seven, minors. I will give a little bit more detail. Afterwards, 
the last semester, semester eight, is for the graduation project. So if you succeed, you will get your bachelor degree. Okay, let's take a look at specializations. For example, Carl Young currently he is working uh, studying the media design semester three, but after he finishes semester three, he can choose any directions he wants. For example, just now we see the questions cybersecurity. Of course, if you choose media design as a profile study, and for semester four, you still can choose any direction you want to go. For example, applied data science, big data, artificial intelligence, or open innovation. So basically you define your own learning objective, also define your goal, the way how you uh, reach your learning objectives, also free define. Also uh, ICT is smart mobile. So every choice is up to you. You can freely choose. And semester seven, so semester seven is last year, the seventh semester. There are different directions you guys can choose. So basically, uh, font is we are applying science. So which means Lecter Rod is Dutch words, but it's a professor from Applied University. Currently, we have AI, artificial intelligence and big data. And for media design, interaction design is suits them very well. And also we have embedded software. Another direction is open educational resource. And if you like gaming, design a game, applied games, also very interesting. So basically semester seven is another opportunity you want to dive into deeper. So you can choose any program you want to choose. For example, artificial intelligence or robotics or human capitals or applied games. It's your choice. And the way we teach, how we teach and coach students. So basically teachers at Fontys, it's more like a coach. We're working together with students. There's some nice videos we can take a look together. Teachers are capable of taking the best out of you and not discourage you if you happen to need a little bit more time learning something that you don't already know. For me, the teachers are a source of motivation and inspiration. This gives me the power to work towards even the impossible. My name is Sonia, student at Fontys ICT. I'm Melis, also student at Fontys ICT. I am Yujan ICT. Teachers at Fontes give us good starting points about new technologies, which we can later start quickly building upon. Something I personally learned at Fontes is to be open to new ideas and innovations. Teachers let us think big and not be restrained by what we already know or the technology which already exists. If you want to develop an idea, then you can always ask your teacher for guidance. Teachers at Fontes are really passionate about what they are doing, and it's inspiring. We can always present our ideas in front of the teachers, and they are so open-minded that they let our imagination go wild. This helps us be unique and improve but also maybe come up with something which doesn't even exist yet. Yeah. Those are the videos. So basically you can get a little bit of feeling how the students think. So basically teachers are more like the coach. So working together because many of our teachers, we had um, at least master and also PhD or professional doctorate engineering degree. So teachers have both sides, not the academic, but also the industrial world. Another attractive part is the new buildings. So you guys can see my background. So this is a new building and start from this year, uh, September, we moved to the new building. Another aspect I think is also worth to uh, pay attention so it's very international environment. ICT department 
in total, including students and also teachers, we have 68 different nationalities. So you will feel very comfortable. OK, like I said, semester seven um, for the minor, one of the direction is interaction design. Uh, this is a website. If you guys like, I made a screenshot, but uh, if you guys like, you can follow me, type the website, just browse. Inside our website, there's some uh, videos I can show you guys, we can watch together. For example, one of the advantage for Fonti student, ICT media design students, they got a real project. So basically the project is connect with the partner education, real companies, those companies try to attract students for the uh, get a professional training to know the field before they finish the study. Another side is, uh, for example, GLOW, GLOW project. GLOW is a light festival. It happened every year. Actually, this year also happened a few years, a few days ago. But let's take a look at this video. It's all media students participate in this event. Wie aan Glow denkt, denkt misschien niet direct aan ICT. Maar dit jaar staan we met maar liefst twee projecten hier op Glow. We gaan kijken wat onze ICT-studenten ervan gemaakt hebben. Staan we bij Crowd Cloud. Ik sta hier met Wessel en uh, hij gaat ons vertellen wat het project inhoudt. Nou, wij, hebben een, uh, wij doen een opleiding in Systeem Media. Daarbij hebben we een specialisatie goed in cybersecurity. Uh, daar zijn we naar achter gekomen. Veel mensen gaan uh, verbinden met gratis wifi. En dat is eigenlijk niet zo veilig als dat het lijkt. En wij willen nou op een visuele manier leuk laten zien uh, dat het niet veilig is. Uh, als je met ons verbindt en uh, je social media apps opent, dan komen die kleuren van die apps in de wolken terecht. Volgend jaar misschien weer op Glow of is dit echt uh, de laatste keer? Nou, als we de kans krijgen, altijd. We staan hier nu bij uh, het project van Fontis, Frightened Flowers. En uh, jongens, hoe was het project? Beter dan verwacht. De cent van dat ook, dus, dus ik hoop dat ik daar wel iets moois neerzet, vind ik. En wat zijn de, de bezoekers om jullie heen van jullie project? De meeste mensen vinden het wel leuk, ze knippen wel veel foto's en zo. Nou, volgens mij is het een uh, geslaagd project geweest. Bedankt jongens voor de tijd. Dit waren dan de Fontes ICT Glow projecten van 2019. Ik hoop dat we er volgend jaar met meer projecten staan. Vond je deze video nou tof? Like ons kanaal dan en volg ons zeker op YouTube. Tot de volgende keer. This uh, the video is from last year and this year because of the current situation, Corona situation. So, um, yeah, we didn't participate, but normally we participate every year. OK, yeah. This is a. Uh, uh, Vandaag zijn we op Glow Festival in Eindhoven. We gaan vier fondsprojecten langs om te kijken wat ze gemaakt hebben. The project you're seeing right behind me and the other one over there is uh, the Ben and Lumen. The best reaction is all the small kids that uh, you can really see them lighting up and they really enjoy seeing their heartbeat presented to them. It's very interesting actually. You have to do it with two persons and then it's going to measure your heartbeat. Ons project staat hier, dat doen we met onze eigen proftak. En we hebben bedacht om met behulp van acht losse laserstralen, waarin je probeert om van het begin af een liedje op te bouwen. Schitterend. Ja. Moest hij doen? Ik moest uh, proberen een laserstraal te raken, is geen goed. 
Het doel van onze opstelling is eigenlijk het visualiseren van geluid. Een speaker. En daar hebben we een rubber doek voor. En door het geluid van de speaker gaat het rubber doek trillen. We hebben een heel klein spiegeltje geplakt. En daar schijnt een heel sterke laser op. En die laser uh, schijnt op dat spiegeltje terug hier op de app na. Ik sta hier met Phil de Spark en dit is ons wezen Sparky. Ik zie hoe de mensen omgaan met ons project, hoe we mensen blij maken. Vooral de kinderen die zijn, vinden het echt helemaal geweldig. Dit waren de vier fondsprojecten van GLOW 2018 en we hopen hier volgend jaar met nog veel meer fondsprojecten te staan. Tot volgend jaar! Okay, uh, last example. This example actually is uh, normally second uh, semester student for media design. It's back then uh, three or four years ago. So, uh, so normally student for se second semester, they got a project to interview the artist and make a poster and also the website for artists try to do promotion. This singer is very famous, Dawkin Lawrence. So uh, you guys can say when a few years ago when he's still studying and all media design student interviewed him and also make the poster and also website for him. So let's enjoy his music. And last year he got uh, Eurovision, the championship.
you out. Okay, I just want to add a little bit. Uh, this uh, student, the moment uh, his project uh, he made together with other students, they interviewed uh, Doc Lawrence. And currently, he already graduated last year, and now he's also one of the teachers. So if you guys start in, uh, in the ICT uh, media design, he also might be one of the teachers. OK. Last part, uh, future jobs, the job perspective. For ICT and media design, after four years study, what's possible? What kind of job titles you can expect? So typically, uh, I would suggest you guys also do a little bit homework. You can just choose uh, Google and type those keywords. For example, UX jobs, user experience jobs, or user design jobs. And those plenty of jobs uh, will be, you can find out. And if you want to know the, for example, the salary, the reference, of course, it's uh, it's combined. Uh, you, experience level and also depends on the different countries, but Glassdoor will be a good reference. You can take a look. So in the future, after four years for media design, ICT and media design, the possible job titles, for example, UX designer, usability engineer, and if some student really good at programming for front end developer, web design, or if you uh, choose the specialization, for example, smart mobile, it's also possible app developer. And if you like more like user researcher and marketing researcher, also the possibilities. So plenty of the plenty of choice. And OK, last part, Q&A. Okay, thank you very much. Now back to live. Okay. Thanks a lot, Lily. Thank you, Leo. Oh, so indeed, uh, uh, as a reminder, so we have showed you now the uh, recorded video, but um, it has explained to you very well, I hope, the content of the media design uh, program. Uh, also uh, related to some projects, uh, uh, Lily, you have shown, and that more or less illustrates that um, uh, media design is uh, far more than only making fancy web websites. Uh, what uh, people sometimes think, it goes far beyond that. Uh, and I think you, you illustrated it well by showing some of the projects have been doing also during the GLOW Festival, which is indeed, as what Elga mentioned in the chat, an annual festival where also students from Fontes University uh, take part in. So thanks a lot, uh, Lily, for this clear and transparent uh, information about the content of the Media Design Bachelor Program. Um, you also gave some information about job perspectives, but maybe one more question before we switch to the uh, to the Q&A together with uh, with our students. Uh, what qualities do you think uh, a media and design student should have to be successful in this uh, in this profile? Um, yeah, to, uh, actually, uh, two years ago, uh, media design, uh, ICT media design from a core space, especially for the international st student, we started development. And last year, uh, when you guys just now watch the video, actually, we intentionally to keep this video um, because content wise, there's nothing change. We keep it quite stable because last year's first time running until now about two years. So we attract more and more international students. They are interested in the media design, ICT and media design domain. And back to your question, Leo, about what kind of qualities uh, can make you succeed in the future for this domain. I would say, like Carla Young mentioned, actually he's uh, one of our generation, first generation ICT media design course based students. So in short, uh, media design is uh, multidisciplinary. So if you are interested in programming 
and the design aspect, for example, Photoshop, drawings, but also to understand what, how the people thinking, why the people are thinking this way, for example, business aspect or psychology aspect. It's combined all different uh, domain. If you think, well, I would like to not only be a programmer, but I also would like to understand how a product start uh, from scratch until the end product to the end users. What's the process? So it will attract a lot of people, also especially young people's attention, not limit to the beer engineer, but also to think about the different opportunities like those job titles, typical jobs. Thank you, Leo. Okay, thank you for this uh, elaboration, uh, Lily. Let's move on now uh, to the students. Uh, Kalyan is also present and Stanislav, maybe you can switch off, switch on your video. Yes, thank you, Stanislav and Kalyan. And of course, unmute yourself. Okay, so um, uh, Kalyan, you already, uh, we have, we've heard you a lot. Now we can see you. Uh, so, uh, first of all, thanks a lot, of course, for your contribution to the presentation. But let me ask you first uh, a straightforward question. Why have you chosen uh, to be an ICT and media design student? Maybe Stanislav, you can start with it. Uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction. So I started ICT and media because First of all, I was very. Uh, I wanted to learn ICT, and I knew that I wanted to study something with ICT and computers. And when I started, I didn't know uh, about media. And actually, when I learned from the uh, first couple of weeks and months about media and what it studied, uh, what study, what you studied in media, I really liked it, and I actually changed my option because I started with just software engineering, but then I chose media. Okay, so for you it was a great asset, uh, the way we introduced the prog program in the first semester, so we let the students do an orientation on five profiles. And yes. In, so after, let's say, 12 weeks, you make a choice for profile and you ended up with media design. Yes, and hey. I really like the media aspect as well. Okay. All right. So, Kalyan, in the presentation, you were uh, a second year student. So, in the meantime, you are a third year student. But hopefully, you still remember why you made the choice for ECT and media design. Uh, yes. Thank you for the question. And, uh... there, there is no sound, Kalyan. I think you have a sound issue. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, now we can hear you. Yeah. OK, perfect. Uh, yes, thank you for the question. I still remember that. I'm still continuing with ICT and media design right now. I'm doing an internship in this semester, and it's within the same domain. And I think I chose it because, uh, as I mentioned in the video, I really wanted to do something with ICT, but I was kind of uh, bored from like programming, and I wanted like a new challenge and a new kind of field. And I was uh, aiming for the business or media design, but eventually uh, in the orientation phase, uh, this gave me like a lot of uh, clarity of what I want to do. And media design was very perfect because uh, they, as they explained it, they said it's a mix between uh, programming, business and design. And I was just like, that's like the perfect choice for me. And yeah, I just, I was always a bit more creative and this had like gave me the opportunity to also stay in the IT field, but at the same time be more yeah, creative and work with design. And I also think it's very important because as you, as you mentioned, it's not just to making things pretty or like just visually make them look nice. It's also about to yeah, understand how people think, uh, to understand uh, what are the, like the global problem, problem and look at the whole picture and trying to find solutions on that. And again, there is a bit creativity there because you can come up with something really nice. And the visual aspect is just, uh, yeah, if it looks nice, then it's uh, better for more people. Mm -hmm. You so, are now yeah. in semester in semester four or five, uh, Kalyan? Uh, yeah. I'm currently in semester five, yeah, the internship semester. Okay, and the internship semester you're doing now is linked to media design, of course, but what are you doing in your internship? 
Yes, uh, my internship is about uh, UX design, so user experience design. Uh, yeah, I'm currently working on like a bunch of different projects related to yeah, design. Most, uh, some of them are for uh, user interfaces. So, for example, there are some uh, websites or applications, and I'm uh, working on the UI, so the user interface, how it looks like. But at the same time, with user experience, so how these things should feel when some users interact with it. And uh, yeah, I'm also meet a lot of uh, have uh, meetings with clients and yeah, get their requirements. And I think the media design uh, yeah, subject helped me with that to like just asking the right questions and knowing what the people like want from the product. And then I can translate that into the design. And yeah, that's why it's not only about the visual things, but it's also understanding the whole pro problem. And yeah, what else? I also do some uh, media production things. So for example, with motion design, uh, creating some animations uh, with After Effects and also some visual design of uh, icons, for example. There are some like for applications, mm -hmm. uh, just icons on the buttons and I have to design how they look like. This is again more like a Photoshop, Illustrator kind of work. And yeah, I think it's mostly that. But of course, it's also yeah, just understanding the problem, asking the right questions, uh, doing a lot of interviews as well, actually. So user research, uh, yeah, the, these kind of things. Okay, that sounds interesting. You're, you like it? What? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. Okay, what company is it? Uh, the company is called uh, Van Berlo. It's, uh, I think, one of the most popular studios in uh, the Netherlands. It's uh, based in Eindhoven and they have an office in uh, Ippenburg, which is uh, kind of a, I don't know, district in the Hague area. Oh. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's a design studio. They uh, yeah work with uh, industrial design and UX design, and just all areas of design. But I'm focused on the yeah the digital parts. Okay, thank you. And Stanislav, in what semester are you currently studying? I'm currently studying in special in my specialization, so that's fourth semester. Mm -hmm. uh, I chose to study game design and technologies and uh, we're currently in the final phase we just started actually so we have one month to do an industry project uh, and we are uh, looking to first start from the concepting part to create a game which is linked to um, the carbon footprint of uh, people mm -hmm. of uh, students okay so I think game design really fits well uh, as a specialization for media design. Uh, was there a special reason you have chosen it? Well, I chose it because, uh, first of all, I really like games and playing games. And I really wanted to learn how they're made and uh, what goes behind it. And uh, I like 3D animation and 3D design as well. So I like working with Blender or Maya, and that's what I like the most. And uh, I picked, I was broken between two uh, uh, specializations. There were the smart mobile and mm -hmm. the game design, but I finally took game design because of the anime, uh, because of the 3D design. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what specialization did you choose, Kalyan? Uh, yes, in my previous semester, I also chose uh, game design. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. OK. All right. Uh, so uh, Stanislav is in semester four. You are in semester five. So you still have three semesters to go, Kalyan. So the whole program is eight semesters. Do you already have a kind of idea what you want to do after graduation? Maybe Kalyan, you can start off. Yeah, all right. That's a yeah, very interesting question. Uh, yeah, I'm still not quite sure what I want to do, but I know that it's going to be in the design field. And I'm currently like finding what I really like. Is it media design or game design? Because uh, yeah, I switched between like the, the semesters and to see uh, yeah, different opportunities. But I think both of them are really linked. As you said, there is a connection there. Because uh, if I yeah, graduate with more media design experience and I have some game design, I can then later switch on between different companies because the expertise, it's really like the, the boundary is really thin. So you can work as uh, both specialists, I think. 
So I think it's going to be something either UX design purely or maybe just uh, game design. But uh, yeah, for now, I really like the UX design kind of job. And mm. yeah, just uh, also some visual design. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's going to be something in that direction. Okay. And Stanislav, what are your plans for the future? Well, uh, for me, I, I, I don't know, uh, but I would like to uh, head in the direction of media design more. Of course, I like the possibility to have the game design and technologies part, but I would like to spec uh, go more in depth into media design, UX design and uh, coding mostly. So back end, I want to maybe learn, teach myself uh, full stack and become a full stack developer. And I'll have all the uh, knowledge from UX uh, until coding and everything. So mm -hmm. I, I can have a big background so that I have more possibilities to uh, work somewhere. Okay. All right. So uh, as you know, uh, also for international students, the uh, job perspectives are great uh, in the Netherlands, especially in our region, the uh, Brainport region, uh, a very uh, innovative top flight technology region in, in, in Europe. We are sometimes compared to Silicon Valley, maybe a little bit exaggerating, but okay, you know what I mean. Uh, a lot of companies concentrated in a, in, in a region where students get a lot of assignments from and of course your internship and graduation internship assignments so if you want to study uh, ict media design or whatever the place to be uh, okay going back to uh, lily for uh, a final question because we are running out of time um lily what uh, what advice do you have as a senior teacher for potential students who want to study with us I would say passion is most important. Just now I saw a question about uh, what percentage of the platforms is acceptable. Actually, uh, for us, we don't have exactly numbers. So basically, as long as you meet requirements, you are welcome. And back to the media design domain, I would say be open mind. Sometimes I got questions and say, yeah, I'm a little bit uh, shy and quiet student student do you think i'm suitable to be a media design student i say yeah you guys very young still most important be open-minded so we have like i uh, just explained start from semester two we try to introduce real life, real project from the companies so you have a lot of opportunities to practice your social skills we you and also your communication skills. Most important, you should have passion. That's all. Okay, I think that's uh, a nice closure. Uh, when I have a look at the chat, um, I think all questions have been answered, um, especially by uh, Mrs. Elger. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Um, let me. See. Let me see. Yeah, passion. I think that's a nice word to finish off this uh, webinar. So let me thank all participants, um, uh, Mrs. Lily, uh, Kalyan and Stanislav for your contribution and also Mrs. Elga. Um, for the students, of course, also thanks a lot that you have taken part in this webinar. Hopefully we have given you some good information so that you can make a well profound choice for uh, maybe this study program. But keep in mind, whatever study program uh, you want to, to do, uh, it's all about passion. Yeah? For the third time, the word is coming by now. Yeah? And of course, try to find out what study program gives you the most passion, because probably you will be successful in it then. So um, thanks a lot. Everybody, uh, for now, I'm going to say goodbye, have a nice evening, and hopefully we will meet again sometime, someplace here in Eindhoven. So for now, all the best. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice evening.
Ja, ik ben er. Ja, oké. Okay. Nou goed, het leek eventjes uh, met die slides even mis te gaan. Maar goed, dat was be verder best goed te volgen. Dat was niet mm -hmm. zo veel. Alleen bij die video's kon je die subtitles niet uh, lezen. Maar verder ging het wel uh, prima. Ja, ik vond het ook wel prima gaan hoor. Ja, overal. Uh, kijk, die bijdrage van Callion was natuurlijk uitstekend. Um, mm -hmm. nou, er waren negen visitors in totaal. <laughs> ik heb er acht geteld. Ja, op een gegeven moment die het langer zijn gebleven. Erbij even en die was er ook zo weer uit. Um, dus uh, dat ging verder prima. Um, nou goed, zet het maar weer op de website. Ja, ik moet het wel even afsluiten. Uh, ja, je hebt nog niet op einde gedrukt. Ja, goed, maar je kunt het toch. 